Yo, what's up, everybody? Um, first off, uh, appreciate y'all that have watched the first two videos. I'm gonna try to make them longer and shit. Um, you know, we got hella expensive mics in the studio, of course. Uh, but I'm gonna do it just like Ryan did and get, you know, like a blue or some shit, you know. Um, backdrop desk all that shit so um chapman hospital so i got sent to chapman hospital for six months it was a dual diagnosis psych ward um and i don't really remember it that well um but i do know like shortly after that shortly after that uh you know I uh, had a lot of thizz, you know? Um, so I'd go to Electric Daisy Carnival, you know, uh, Monster Madness, Coachella, um, back before they weren't so fucking mainstream and shit. And, uh, you know, I wasn't like a candy kid. Like, I'd probably be wearing some shit like this, but like just with a candy bracelet on, you know, but half a boat in my pants. You feel me? Um, so I went to EDC and this was 2007 because it was the one before the last one where like the cop's daughter died or whatever and they moved it to Vegas, right? So I'm at EDC and I was already rolling for like 48 hours straight before the weekend, you know? So come Monday morning, uh, you know, I think I took something like 36 or like 40 something press bills, like white octagons, green Xbox, uh, pink pigs, and trading him for other pills from other people. You know what I mean? Um, I forgot that my mom had set up a psychology appointment for me right so i'm i'm 18 now at this point um and i'm gonna be going back and forth you know with these stories and shit but i'm trying to you know stay on track i'm 18 uh didn't know about 5htp yet <laughs> so that monday morning i was i had the worst ser lack of serotonin hangover ever um and the psychologist diagnosed me as bipolar. That's like a common thing, like, you know, people being, addicts being misdiagnosed, you know. Um, you know, I've met a real bipolar person before, a few of them, and I definitely am not one. Um, I was misdiagnosed. I've had therapists and, and psychologists and psychiatrists over the years after that, you know, when I was like in my mid 20s and up to my 30s tell me I'm not bipolar. I just, you know, I have depression, social anxiety, general anxiety, uh, ADD, you know what I mean? Um, so now I'm going to these dual diagnosis treatment centers, right? And uh, they're telling me shit like, you know, like medication comes first, recovery comes second, like shit like that. And it's like, you know, I already had a resentment against 12 step programs because of that ridiculous MA meeting, you know? Um, but I had this resentment and idea and belief of the program too. And I, I'd never like fully indulged in it 100%. Like I go to, you know, 90 and 90 and relapse because by that point I'm three months fucking abstinent with no program no work I've done on myself, like, of course I'm gonna go use, you know, like all, you know, you're starting to feel again, like all that, like emotion comes up and, you know, the resentment, man, kills us, you know what I mean? Um, fuck that psychologist. <sighs> I'm not even gonna put his name on blast, fuck him, he don't even deserve that shit. Um, so yeah, yeah. I was on Prozac, I was on Depakote, I was on Librium, I was on Safris, I was on Wellbutrin, I was on Clonazepam, Ativan, Alprazolam, uh, fucking 
cocktails of like nasty shit dude and i didn't know that like you like i didn't know adjusting to a medication and then like withdrawing off a of psychotropic medication is the worst dude because you know i i'd forget i was on pills and and like i was never sober either so i'm like on these you know psych meds and like smoking crack and you know shooting speed and shooting heroin and that shit made me fucking crazy man no nah, i was born like that but uh so i did that six months at chapman hospital um relapsed agreed to you know go to los encinas hospital um because I, I was still like staying with my my uh my moms at the time um till i started like my sober living tour and county jail tour etc you know um so i went to los encinas dr drew pinsky was working there at the time he was my personal doctor uh bob forrest was my drug counselor you know celebrity rehab this is before celebrity rehab um this was like the same era when like steve-o was there and mike tyson was there and mike tyson knocked him out i don't know if y'all have seen that clip if you haven't look it up on youtube it's fucking hilarious steve-o's the goat um dr drew told my buddy and I, uh, one of my best friends, um, that the amount of ecstasy we've done without antidepressants will never be happy in life or some shit like that quote. Um, you know, I'm not on any psychotropic medication at all. Um, So was he lying to us, you know, um, whatever, you know, um, my roommate in Los Encinas <laughs> broke Dr. Drew's nose and, uh, if, you know, they, of course they fucking filed a police report on it. Dude went to prison over that shit. Um, don't really blame him for punching Dr. Drew. I mean, you know. Um, so I left Los Encinas, I go, no, 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 I'm not living with my mom at this time. I had an apartment in Pasadena and, uh, my roommate, I was only gone for like 10 days at Los Encinas and my roommate, um, this shit looked like a trap house, dude. Like people like tagged up with some toy shit all over the fucking walls. And like, I go in there and it's just like a fucking syringe den dude like i'd never stuck a needle in my arm up to this point and everyone was doing they were shooting ketamine and shooting powder cocaine so the homie was like here bro i'll do it for you i'm like Fuck, all right so i put my arm out i'm like and when he hit it i was like damn that's it <sighs> Powder yay, dude. Woo! Sheesh. That was when cocaine was good, too. That shit is trash now. It's all trash. It has fentanyls and everything. Don't fucking touch powders, man. Period. Um, so, once I learned how to hit myself, it was on and cracking. Um, so, I, I was shooting powder coke for about six months. Um... And I, I, I was always trapping, you know, um, I was always trapping. Uh, so I met a chemistry teacher and, uh, it was on and cracking after that. Um, Fuck, I'm getting sidetracked, man. This shit is hard. Fucking, you know, I gotta say another thing when I do these Friend Fridays, 
bless his heart it's all love but i'm going to let my guests speak more than me you know <laughs> oh yeah peep the ink man let's go um shooting powder coke um i remember dude like my roommate um i knew he had shit but I, I I couldn't find where he hit it. And he wasn't there at the apartment at the time, right? So I ransacked this fool's room and I'm like in his closet and I reach on the top, you know, and I feel a syringe, right? So I grab this syringe and it's like the the needles all spiked. Like it's it was an old ass syringe full of black coagulated blood. And I'm like, lick it like a little blood drip comes off the top i lick it it's bitter i'm like cool it's coke <sighs> that shit was black tar man um next thing i know i'm 15 miles away in downtown la in pershing square walking with my homeless homeboy um my lower companion and i'm puking in every single fucking trash can on like each block we would walk, I'd throw up in the trash can. Blah, blah. So I was like, I'll never ever do heroin, you know? Um, that, I don't know how I survived that and how I didn't get hep C, how I don't have HIV. Like, that's the, that's the insanity of this disease, man. That's, uh, that's the kind of, that's how I get down, you know? Like, I've shared needles in jail with a dozen other people. I sat at park benches when I was homeless at the park sharing needles with bums and shit um you know so when i found fentanyl later you know i was like you know my justification of it was like oh well, i'm not shooting shit anymore i'm just smoking it so it's safer right nah bro first hit double narcan my chest and ribs were bruised for fucking six months <sighs> um so i'm shooting powder cocaine and you know my plug you know started cutting that shit with some nasty shit like bleach or some shit and uh i got really sick stopped fucking with it um when i went to the needle exchange they give you a little brown paper bag you know with cookers and cotton balls and uh sterile water and um you know uh fresh needles fresh rigs um and there was a little baggie of white powder and I'm, I'm asking the guy i'm like i'm like hey man i'm like what what's what is this he goes vitamin c powder and i was like okay for what and he's like uh to shoot your crack with and i was like oh shit and he's like yeah the vitamin c like breaks down the baking soda so you can shoot your crack duh like and I'm like, oh, fuck. He's like, or you can use lemon juice. I'm like, tight. So I ran through that bag. Next thing I know, I'm in MacArthur Park. Fucking at 3 o'clock in the morning. Spun the fuck out of my mind. Trying to find a fucking lemon tree, man. So I can go in the El Pollo Loco bathroom. Cut up this Arizona can. And fucking shoot my crack, you know? Um... And, you know, for those that are new to my channel that uh, don't know that I am a musician, a hip hop artist, please watch my music videos. Oh, so I kind of touched what I just spoke on in the Cold Air Balloons music video. Ryan Leone co-stars in that shit with me. Um, he plays my homie on parole. Um, yeah, peep that, Cold Air Balloons. <sighs> so, I kicked all those people out of my trap apartment. Um, I'm hanging out with this bitch, right? This 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 woman, and um, there's a difference, ladies. I think y'all know that. So I'm at that apartment, and my roommate at the time, I thought he wasn't home, right? And uh, so I'm like, I'm, so just like this, like this is the view, like. Uh, this is the couch like i have my arm around the girl and like directly across from us is the hallway 
and like his bedroom door, right? And uh, this this dude, when he would shoot coke, he would get so fucking weird, like creepy weird and like creep out. Like what I've never ever brought uh, chicks home after this scenario that happened. So I'm hanging out with homegirl. We both think that we're alone at the pad, right? And uh, my roommate comes out of his room in his boxers, dripping sweat. He opens the door and he goes. Like that. Like he just shot like a point three of some yay. You know, he's like. And this chick was just like, who the fuck is that? And I was like, oh, that's. That's Lewis, that's my roommate, you know? I was like, Lewis, get the fuck back in your room, bro. What the fuck are you doing? And, you know, he he had like, I wanna say he had like Asperger's or some shit like that. He just, or he just, he, he just had such bad ADHD, like, like worse than Ryan ADHD. Like, that's bad. Um where he just he, he couldn't like you're talking to a fucking brick wall you know um so <laughs> she leaves like your roommate's fucking weird i was like yeah i know stab this guy nah uh, i don't know where he's at current day um he got really bad into meth and and kind of just um, that's one of my biggest fears is like not even getting an LWAT or, or dying. Right. Um, my biggest, one of my biggest fears is like just doing, like if I were to ever go out again and do drugs to the point, like most likely synthetics to the point, uh, where like I literally drive myself crazy where I can't complete a sentence or like have a conversation with somebody let alone write and record and perform a rap song you know fuck that shit so he lewis got really bad into crystal meth and fell off the deep end um last i seen and heard um so you know like now my veins are blown out like my hands my arms this is this is this tattoo reason why i got the syringes there that's the very first spot i ever i ever shot up and i was an athlete all my life i played baseball soccer basketball like i had like big fucking rope eyes you know and i burned those out so quick with that powder coke and like the veins in my feet were gone uh it wasn't until i started shooting black tar where i started hitting my neck and like you know the fucking right, right here on my head hit my forehead my dick fucking that vein on like your hip i forgot what it's called it's like an artery i think like if you miss that shit you can fucking die and shit i don't know if that's a myth or not um i mean i'm still alive so i guess it is right uh so yeah i burned out my veins like and you know shooting lemon juice in your veins that's a quick way to burn it out so then i'm like smoking crack and like the zans aren't doing shit anymore for the come down so i'm like my boy rest in peace fuck chris berta man rest in peace man he died at 30 years old from cirrhosis of the liver from alcoholism he drank himself to death right in the beginning of fucking covid so me family you know none of us could go visit him and shit he died alone in a hospital bed from cirrhosis of the liver man in 2020 uh, solid dude solid dude um so chris chris berta and again, cold air balloons, you know, I ref, you know, I never use real names, um, but my song cold air balloons, my video cold air balloons is about like my relationship to heroin, like 
the progression, how we met, like how it all began, how it ended, et cetera, right? Um, so Chris hit me up and was like, yo, I have a homeboy who, um, who needs a ride to MacArthur Park to like pick up some, some black. Like, will you drive him? He'll give you gas money and smoke you out. And I'm like, I'm good on the smoke out. Like, I'll take the gas money though, sure, you know? So I drive this kid by kid i mean you know he was like 18 19. um i'm 21 my baby's mom's pregnant uh cheating on me like staying at some tweaker pad i was stressed the fuck out dude i was having nightmares um <sighs> You know, 21, I'm 35 now, like 21, that is such a huge age difference. Like, you know, your your brain is still very shapeable at that time, you know? Um, so I'm giving this dude rides every day to MacArthur Park and he'd give me like 40 bucks for gas. And, uh, and I was driving that Solara that I talk about in the cold air balloons video. Um, so I'm, I'm taking him, I'm taking him to pick up every day. He's paying me gas money. And then he'd smoke me out with like a balloon and like, it got me faded. It was cool. Got rid of my anxiety completely, 110%. Um, and I'm not thinking about it at the time. Like, oh, this feels good. This, oh yeah, I was like, but I, it wasn't something like, it wasn't, I was like an upper guy still at the time, you know? Um, and one day it was like the 15th day or some shit in a row, uh, dude didn't need me to drive him. Right. So I woke up like, and I don't ever get sick. Like I never get the flu and I woke up like feeling like I have the flu, you know? And I, I hit up I hit up my boy Junior, he slides through to the crib and I'm like, bro, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with me, dude? I never get the flu. He goes, you got the Malias, dog? I was like, the Malias? He's like, you're dope sick, fool. And I was like, dope sick? Like, what the fuck is dope sick, you know? My entire drug history prior to this, you know, was cocaine, meth, ecstasy, psychedelics you know like i not even alcohol or benzos no opiates um so i'd never experienced physical withdrawal um and i kind of like got addicted to heroin on accident i mean i willingly smoked it you know but like i didn't think that and that's crazy because i studied like arrowid.org as a kid and I knew better, but you know, my curiosity got the best of me. And um, it was on and cracking after that uh, because I did so much more damage, you know, in 11 more years. So from, from that point on, it was 11 years before I got clean off that shit. And uh, it grabbed me by the balls, man. I, I was I was hooked physically, psychologically. Um, I got a stu I had a stupid plug for it, um, and you know went from smoking two balloons a day to like I'm smoking six at a time to like my homie's like, bro, just cold water, stir that shit in an Arizona can, fucking muscle it. I was like, oh shit, you can muscle this shit what okay so you know my veins are blown out now i'm hitting my ass cheeks and my biceps and shit hit all the veins on my neck you know um and it went from like the the shitty rat turds you know the the 12 balloons in a pack for 45 bucks or whatever 50 bucks to you know buying grams of black tar for 80 bucks a piece um, or like, you know, the gunpowder shit, like you, the huff, you know, it tars up or the gunpowder shit was gray. Um, huff is like, you know, the rocky shit, crunchy shit. Um, so yeah, 10 more years of that, man. So, you know, um, 
my anxiety was so bad during like that pregnancy slash breakup slash get back together thing with my baby's mom uh heroin worked better than xanax getting rid of that anxiety and panic and like i don't know what to do dude so and and i'm trying to get out the the e-game at this time right and i meet a grower up in humboldt county um and i'd never seen that many weed plants in my life like he had light depth like multiple light depth greenhouses regular greenhouse um full outdoor um it was like a sea of green man it's oh man that property is fucking beautiful dude like on a clear day you can see mount shasta fucking over there in oregon no mount shasta is it in oregon i don't fucking know my geography man um anyway you can see mount shasta you can see like the lighthouse in mckinleyville and arcata you know the the ocean right there humboldt county emerald triangle um and i was just like bro like if you front me 50 pounds i can get rid of it all in a few days and he's like word and he's like how about i front you 20 and see how you do i'm like perfect so now i'm you know i'm transporting cannabis up and down you know the 101 and 5 freeway like a lot of people do <laughs> still um and it uh it helped me get out of the other game i was in you know um and because you know i i at this point you know um my kid was like two months old not in my custody um <clears throat> and uh I needed a job, you know? And I, I tried, like, I was like, man, okay, so I should try and get a regular job, right? Like, I'm about to be a dad, or I'm a dad, like, I need a regular job, right? So I was doing shit like selling, like, Kirby vacuums, and <laughs> yo, so we we do, uh, I do, like, the demonstrations, like, they drop us off in a van in, like, Long Beach, or, like, Pomona, or, like, uh, Santa Monica, to do, like, demonstrations at people's houses, and uh um one day like and i lived in pasadena at this time um it was a demo in pasadena and i was doing the demo i, I told this dude he's like look man he's like i don't want to buy a vacuum and i'm like look bro i'm like look i get paid to do these demos like please just let me do one demo man like and he's like all right yeah yeah, yeah. dude like rolled a joint for us and shit made me some coffee and shit it was lit um, so I'm doing the demonstration and I shampooed the carpet, right? And then I'm trying to like take the part off and adjust it or whatever. And I couldn't figure it out. And I got so frustrated. I just slammed the vacuum on the ground and stormed out the house and caught the bus down Lake Avenue, you know, <laughs> never went back to that job again. Uh, I'll never work for the man. Um, so the grower. So I'm 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 transporting packs up and down the interstate, right? And uh, I get arrested by CHP um, with 21 half pounds of cannabis and possession of heroin and never been in trouble before. Like when I was 18, I did a month in county for, in Seattle, in King County Jail for vandalism and criminal trespass. But uh, this was the first time, and this was like before shit went legal. This was 2008, 2009. So I was looking at a lot of time. I'm like, fuck. Luckily, when they arrested me, um before i got you know my jumpsuit and shit i think they're red at a uh, humboldt county um correctional or court whatever the fuck it's called but i asked i asked uh, to get a phone number out my phone you know um 
and I got the 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 you know my my boy's number and he I called and right away he's like need me to bail you and I was like yeah you know my bail was like thirty thousand dollars um that was like the ten percent um uh so you know if it luckily this happened in humble it didn't happen in like LA or anywhere in between because you know I had a lot of weight on me and uh um they gave me prop 36 felony probation and uh I pled guilty to a felony sales charge so the distribution the transportation the trafficking all got brought down to a possession with intent to sell a uh, felony got expunged when um shit went legal in 2016 2017 2016 um so yeah that happened and uh now i'm getting drug tested all the time i got a probation officer and at first they were trying they were like they wanted so at first i'm on probation in humboldt county right they wanted me to like like stay there and i was like dude i i I live in LA, like I have a newborn, um, like it's four days or yeah. So when I got arrested, it was like December 21st or some shit. Right. Um, so my boy bailed me out and fucking, uh, he put his whole 120 acres of land up, um, to the bail bonds. Right. So I was like, dude, like, I have to go back to LA. Like, I have to handle some shit, you know? And he's like, I'm going with you. Because he didn't, you know, I was a flight risk, you know? Um, I, I, I would never, you know, I would have never done, I've always been, you know, I've done scumbag shit. I've always been loyal to my people, you know? Um, so I would have never done that anyway. But so he, he's like, you know, I grew up in Catalina Island, right? I was like, what? That's crazy, you know? I used to go to summer camp there as a kid. Um, you know, my pops was a Emmy Award nominated film editor. You know, I grew up, um, you know, I was the kid whose parents were like, oh, not my kid, you know, cause like I had everything handed to me on a silver spoon to keep it 100, you know? And uh, that like that fucked me up later in life you know as an adult like in relationships and shit because I, I you know i'd have you know um expectations right um so catalina he grew up in catalina um this fool got me a bunch of methadone pills in Eureka before we drove down to LA because I, I was sick um you know uh so we get to LA handle business come back so I'm coming up to Humboldt like two times a month to check in with probation to test right and they finally transfer my probation to LA County to you know um Pasadena and uh I finish it off there. No, 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 no. And again, I'm going to bounce back and forth. So we'll save that part for later. Um, the heroin. So I end up beating the dog shit out this dude. So that 19 year old. He wanted to talk all stupid to me, dude. And I bitch slapped him. He's lucky he didn't get the soccer kick to the face. You feel me? So, burned that bridge. This fool ends up telling, not on me, but you know, on, you know, a certain organization. Shit made the news, all that. Um, so that ass beating you got prior to that, he, he deserved that one for sure. Um, so I'm on felony probation. 
No, we're gonna go back to that part. We're gonna cut the video now because I'm sidetracked and I wanna stay on track. So thank you for listening to chapter two. If you haven't peeped my music, peep my music. Uh, subscribe to my boy Sonny Darko, his YouTube channel, uh, peep our video casket call. Um, and I'll put all the links and shit, you know, in the information below. Much love, y'all. Uh, this Friday, I'll be dropping the, my first Friend Fridays episode uh, featuring my producer slash label mate, El Diablo Beats, um, courtesy of Angelino Records, Sony Orchard. Yeah, bitch. Peace.